Hello everybody, welcome back to Dream Daddy. My name is Jenny Annie Dots and this is Delayed Gaming, the channel where we play video games that everybody else has already played, except I haven't. Um, we are, we are making our way to the secret ending of Dream Daddy. And I'm, I'm hopeful that I will get it. I, I don't actually, I don't actually know if this is the proper way of getting it or not, so we're gonna find out, but we did day two. Day two went well. We're gonna do day three now, and I guess we'll see what happens. Let's get into it. It's been a long day, and yet I'm not quite ready to sleep. Usually when I feel this way, I mainline investigation investigative TV until I pass out but today I feel like it would make me antsy I decide to take a relaxing stroll there you go after a bit of wandering I find myself passing by Jim and Kim's being of legal drinking age and sound judgment I decide to stop in I typically try to limit my consumption of alcohol to set a positive example for Amanda but I also feel a responsibility to play a role as a social agent in our community and a watering hole such as Jim and Kim's is the perfect place to do it. I also desperately need a beer. Mm, beer sounds great. Jim and Kim's is lively tonight. The patrons are milling about and even Neil seems to be having a good time. Coming here was a good idea. Mm. As I reach to collect my beer, I see Mary <laughs> at the end of the bar. She's not semi-ironically throwing herself all over anyone. In fact, she's alone. She looks so sad. A pain of guilt shoots through me. Does she know? Is this because of me? Am I a homewrecker? Oh. Oh. Uh, oh. Say hi. Let's say hi. I decide to go say hello, and I walk over to her booth. She doesn't look up. The seat taken? She still doesn't look up. I take a seat anyways, and she finally notices me. Oh. You. Okay. This was maybe not the best idea. Uh, hey. Hey. Having fun with your new best friend, Joseph? Uh, he's a great. I'm so glad. I'm so happy for you two. Mary, I'm not. Mm. I never accuse you of anything uncouth, Jimmy. You're just having an innocent, very platonic time with my husband. A supportive friendship. Ugh. You're a good friend, aren't you? Uh, sure. Yep, just a friend. I'm there when he needs me, Mary. Uh, yep, just a friend. That's funny. Joseph usually likes his friends to at least have a spine. Ugh. We can't all be as blunt as you are, Mary. Sir, so you're an expert on my marriage now. It doesn't take an expert to see that you two are miserable. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I'm not trying to be an expert on your marriage. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be an expert. I'm just trying to be there for my friend, okay? Oh, you're there for him? I see how you look at him. I bet you're there for him a lot. She takes a long sip of her drink. This was a mistake. You know, you're really not his type. I'm surprised. Ouch. Mary pays her tab and strides right out of Jim and Kim's without looking back. Okay. Bye, Mary. Yikes. Well, it's been a long day. I'm just about ready to pack it in. After a few bites of ice cream from the freezer, I turn off all the lights and I walk down the hall to my room. I wonder if Amanda's still awake. That kid needs some sleep. As I pass by her room, I can hear a faint sound, but I can't quite make out what it is. I get a little closer. Is she... crying? I knock gently on the door. Hey, Amanda. The crying immediately stops. Not right now. Her voice sounds strange. She sniffles. I need to make sure she's okay. I open the door. <laughs> oh, we've we've done this already. Oh, poor Amanda. She's so upset. So we skipped through all of the uh, daddy-daughter stuff, and now we're going to go on our third and final date with Joseph. And hopefully, hopefully, we get the secret ending. Uh, hey, you know what they say about third dates? They get pretty serious. You might have not time to Brown's dad but for a while. That's fine. That is fine. I really want to see Joseph again, but 
but after that weird encounter with Mary, I don't know, he's my friend, right? I should be able to hang out with him and not it not be weird, right? Right? The computer pings and a message flies into my inbox. It's Joseph. Hey, Jamie, we should hang out. Like, actually hang out. No manual labor, no impromptu therapy sessions with sad DJs, no kids, just you, me, and the open ocean. Wait, how are we going to get to an open ocean? How are, how are we going to get on an open ocean, you might ask? Good question. Whoa, persistent. If you're interested, I'll meet you down by the marina and you can check out the goods, if you know what I mean. I mean, my yacht. Let me know. No sounds a yacht? Joseph owns a yacht? All right. I'm as surprised as you are. Oh, no. You've been holding out on me. I'm your only daughter whom you love. What? Did you think that having me as a father would somehow afford you the fringe benefit of getting on a yacht? Huh? What else did you get me? An unhealthy upbringing in supportive environment. I am literally paying for your college. Not a dog, that's for sure. <laughs> okay. But what if I had the exact same upbringing in a environment but I could also go on a yacht sometimes. Relax kiddo, Joseph inviting me. Joseph is Joseph's inviting me on his yacht. It's going to be a yacht of fun. Dad. I'm glad you're excited, but it doesn't mean you get to start throwing out puns. Why yacht, Amanda? Mm. Well, I gotta go get ready to go on my friend's yacht. I start to walk away but Amanda stops hmm. me. Hey, in all serious uh, in all seriousness, I hope you have fun. Ah. But make good choices, okay? But Dad, hmm? don't stay out too late or you can't go to Jennifer Longfoot's birthday party this weekend. She promised she would prom 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 propose to me, but we ended up going with Logan Cr Crutchfield. I'm not going anywhere near that party. Good bit, Dad. Good bit. I respond back to Joseph, letting him know I'll be there. A quaint marina completed with a local mom and pop shop and a small diner framed by the bay. I'm, I've gone for a few walks by the bayside to stare at, stare enviously at the, all the nice boats before. Joseph should be around here somewhere. Gosh, this is fancy. I feel a little out of place. Hey, Jimmy. Jo Joseph? Where are you? Up here. I look up. Joseph waves to me from atop a huge yacht. I've never been on a yacht before. You'll never forget your first. I glance at the name on the side of the boat. The St. Peter, huh? Inherited thing, the thing from my pops. Real fire and brimstone type. Loved yachts. So what's the plan, Captain? I figured since the last time we went a bit sideways, we could cast our lot on the open sea. Wrestle with Neptune, set sail on the seas of adventure. You're kind of a goofball when you're not wrangling up your kids, you know that? Joseph smiles and winks from his perch. I have no idea what you're talking about. Joseph hops down and extends a hand to me, helping me up onto the yacht. I'm thrown off by how soft his hands are. Does he moisturize or what? Jimmy, stop thinking about his hands. Your thoughts. You're going to be on a boat, alone, with Joseph, on the open ocean. It's a yacht. He's married. It's fine. This is fine. After undoing the mooring and climbing onto the cap, onto his captain's seat, Joseph slowly takes the boat out, ringing the big steel bell with extra emphasis, even though nobody else seems to be around. What a pretty sight! <sighs> Shoving off, boat launching, man and boat launching as one. The Saint Peter navigates out of the marina and into the open water with Joseph doing the occasional steering flourish as the boat bobs along the waves. Oh. He seems a lot more relaxed out here. Joseph is definitely in his element. <laughs> this is the part where we wrestle Neptune, so please remove your shirt and roll in some talcum powder. I didn't bring any talcum powder. I usually carry some on me, but I left my pocket-sized bottle in my nightstand. I chafe easily. Right. For a while, we watch as the trees and the waves pass us by. Where are we going? Oh. A little further out. It's a lot quieter once we get on the open <laughs> water. Plus, we could see whales. Whales are cool. I don't trust whales. Nothing should be that big. Hey. Noted. Joseph maneuvers the boat past some boy, boys, buoys. I can read. 
He hmm. sighs. Wish I could get out more often, but you know, family, wife, saving nice. souls. Nice. So many souls, I can barely hold on to them all. I watched Joseph work the boat. Despite his age, he doesn't look like he's slowed down at all. And from here, I can see how toned his muscles are. Impure thoughts. Hey. Joseph and Joseph and I boat in silence as the bay gets smaller and smaller behind us. I decide to take a peek over the edge of the ship. The wake this thing has kicks off is intense. I wonder if Joseph would ever let me water ski off his yacht. Hey, dolphins! Joseph, there are dolphins! <sighs> so you're scared of whales, but not dolphins. I feel like there is an unspoken truce between man and dolphin. I would be more comfortable riding a dolphin into the <laughs> Dolphins are way more dangerous. They sometimes drown their babies for fun, you know. Can I trust nothing on the open oh. ocean? I'd like to think that I'm pretty cool. All right, Joseph, it's you and me versus the entirety of marine life. <laughs> I yell out to the ocean. You're spineless invertebrates. I had lobster last week and I can't wait to eat more of you. My life goal is to punch as many fish as I can before I die. I had lobster. I had lobster last week. You tell them, Jimmy. Oh. And here we are. Oh. Jimmy, welcome to the ocean. I look out. That's so pretty. I look out to the vast expanse of blueness. Yep, that's the ocean. I'm suddenly struck with an overwhelming sense of catastrophic claustrophobia despite being in a wide open space. I am on a boat with a handsome man, a handsome married man, and there are whales beneath us. Nothing should be that big. A little daunting, isn't it? Do you trust the whales? Aww. You know, there are more dangerous things in the ocean than whales, right? right? Like tuna. Tuna is an apex predator. What about sharks? Aww. Sharks are tight. It's the tuna that you gotta watch out for. And the whales? Hey, wanna look out wistfully at the sea with me? Joseph and I head to the bow of the ship to do some quiet contemplation. You know, oh. I... Shh. Quiet contemplation. Oh. I'm alone with my thoughts. Cool. Hey. I look out the sea for a bit. Then over to Joseph. He looks so commanding as he surveys the ocean. It feels like he is really at home on the water. What Mary said to me at the bar. I can't stop thinking about it. Is she right? But she's terrible to him. He's unhappy. He deserves better. I, I don't know what to think about this. But I just feel so drawn to Joseph. I should say something. So, uh, about Mary, Joseph continues to stare off in the distance. It's, um, mm. well, if you really want to know, oh, cracker suddenly I hear a sputter come from the engine room. Joseph runs over to the boat's controls and taps on some dials. I guess we can talk about Mary later. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> we might have a small problem. What small problem? Yeah. We are out of gas. The whales are going to get us. The whales siphoned our gas. Mm. It's okay. I can call one of my boat buddies to come tow us back in. Joseph pulls out his phone. Ugh. Just kidding. I can't do that because there's no service. I check my phone. I don't have service. Mm. Should we just submit ourselves to the whales? Well, I do have an old radio in the office, but it's broken. Are you handy with tools? I am a dad. If the radio is anything, a bike on a Christmas Eve, it should be no problem. Let's take a look at it and see what we can figure out. Joseph directs me to the radio and showcases it in blah, blah, blah. Hmm. I don't know how radios work. I think there's just some frayed wires in here. If we can reattach them, we should have a working radio in no time. We stare into the interior of the radio. I'm not even entirely sure what I'm looking at. I don't think Joseph knows either. Uh, you know what? Let's just throw some stuff around in there and see what works. Oh, I have to, I have to, oh no. MacGyver, that radio. Okay. Um, let's see here. Let's grab this wire. Throw the wire in here. Okay. Uh, I don't want that. I want the wire. Give me the wire. Oh, I guess no. Hold on. Okay, let's throw the wire in here. Okay, um, maybe this, yeah, let's throw that in there, and maybe this guy, 
that look right? Maybe some, maybe some gum. Let's throw the gum in there. Power! Did it work? Yeah! I did it! Sweet! Hey, it works, kinda. The radio springs to life. Woo! We did it! Joseph speaks to the prince into the receiver. Hello? Hello? Can anyone hear me? He tries a few other channels. Nobody responds. We might be a little far out. I don't think there's anyone in range. How big's the range? Well, this radio came with a boat when my dad bought it in the 60s, so not great. That's reassuring. Now what? There's worse places to be stuck on than a yacht. Wine? Wine! Yeah. Keep a couple of emergency bottles below deck. Want to go grab some while I fiddle with the radio some more? Yeah. Oh, let's see. Wine, wine. It's got to be around here somewhere. Examine the lounge. Exa okay, examine the lounge. For an old yacht, this lounge is pretty high class. Wood paneling on everything, leather couches. It's like an old Playboy photo shoot in here. Examine the bed. Oh, a California king. Swanky. It's unmade and a little messy. Less swanky. For an old yacht, this lounge is pretty high class. Oh, I already... Okay. Examine the floor. And uh, focus on the rest of the room. Examine the shelf. I take a look at everything on the shelf. Uh, let's see. Uh, examine the photos. There's a few photos on the wall here. Looks like pictures from Joseph and Mary's wedding day. Nice grandpa glasses. Looking real slick there, Joe. Another picture of Mary showed Joseph on this very yacht. Qualified 90s fashion right here. Mary still has her... Patent stink face, but at least Joseph seems happy on the water. Hey, it's all the dads. Looks like this is from a couple of years ago. The gang's still all here. Brian, Matt, Hugo, Craig, Damien, Robert. Wow, Robert's actually smiling and wearing a sweater. That's, I know that sweater. And there's one guy on the end I don't recognize. Hugo's ex, maybe? Oh, hey, there's Joseph go-karting with the kids. That's fun. Take a look at everything on the shelf. Uh, examine the books. Looks like a bunch of different Bibles. On brand. Couple old vet magazines. I guess those must be Mary's. Wait a minute. Is this? Well, well, well. The hot body shoe is on the other hot body foot. Take a look at everything on the shelf. Uh, shouldn't put the mix mix. There's one thing that Joseph does right. It's the odd step where he puts on shelves. I take a moment to closely examine what I think is an old submarine clock. Ah, and there are the crosses again. Boy knows his crosses. Really cool design, too. All right, and focus on the rest of the room. Uh, let's look at the cabinet. It's a sturdy cabinet, a little dusty, but I bet there's some treasures in here. Mm, examine the drawer. Hey, it's wine. A whole drawer of drawer full of wine. It's a yacht club miracle. Twilight Rogue, huh? Come to daddy. Now I just need to find some glasses. It's a sturdy cabinet, a little dusty. I bet there's some treasures in here. Uh, examine the floor. No, let's, let's, let's go back to Joseph. We're gonna go back to Joseph. Dang, I need to find some glasses for this wine. Oh, okay. Uh, uh okay, never mind. Examine the cabinet. Uh, examine the fire extinguisher. Look, you can tell a lot about a man how seriously he takes his fire safety. Nice, Joseph. Nice. Alright, examine the flashlight. Well, this is a solution to a different problem. Maybe if we're stranded out here for days and run out of electricity, we'll need these. But, but the chief concern right now is the wine intake. Alright. Let's, right, let's take a look. Examine the side table. Ah, here are some wine glasses. These are the perfect vessel for the Twilight Rogue. Finally, time to get back to Joseph. All right. Da, 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 da. Let's go back to Joseph. I bring the wine and glasses up to the deck to find Joseph still hunched over the radio. Oh. Jimmy, wine, good to see you too. Just in time for the sunset. I didn't take you for a drinker. <laughs> Haven't you heard? I'm a cool minister. How cool. Oh. I, can land, I can land half of my kickflips. What is that? Like, four? Hey. Five on a good day. Poor me. 
<laughs> regular. <laughs> now this is how you do do standard at sea. We clink our glasses and drink up. <laughs> this wine's not bad. There's a hint of, am I tasting mm. grapes? <laughs> you have a discerning palate. It might be grapes. Joseph and I lounge on the deck with our yacht wine, taking in the ocean air. The sun starts to dip below the horizon. We could be stranded out here forever. <laughs> I can't think of anybody else I'd want to be stranded with. It's just you, me, and uh, yeah. all those whales. So many whales. You're killing the vibe. Mm. Revive the vibe, Jimmy. It generally takes three days and a gigantic stone door rolled in front of the tomb. But I think we can save it. Uh, do you like your mysteries hot bodied? I bet we'll have a whale of a time. What's it like owning a yacht? Ooh, this view though. Ooh, let's see. This view though. I mean, there's something a lot prettier right in front of me. Sweet, full bodied. God damn. Joseph, I. This wine, so good. God damn. Do you like your mysteries hot bodied? Um, what's it like owning a yacht? Fuel prices are on the rise. Yearly maintenance is a bit of a strain on the finances. Can't really take it out in the winter months. Oh. But also sometimes you can have a party on your yacht and everyone thinks you're cool. So it evens hmm. out. Jimmy, if you had a yacht, what would you name it? Ooh, the salty swallow, long, hard, and full of semen. Fuck you, whales. <laughs> I'm going to get demonetized for that one, but I don't care. Um... The salty swallow. <laughs> Joseph chokes on his wine. You know, like the bird. What? Did you? What did you think I meant? Oh. Nothing. Nothing at all. I go take another sip of wine, but I stop myself. Is wine an acceptable beverage for the, in the Marquesas oh. zone? That it is, Jimmy. All beverages of leisure are welcome in the Margarita zone. This is almost what we wanted, right? Oh. No responsibilities, no worries, other than possibly dying out here, and the whales. Ooh. Yeah, but I'd say we're in the zone. Joseph and I clink our wine glasses again. To the margarita zone. Nice. Wasted away again. If you have any salt shakers, we can arrange them into a pentagram to summon Jimmy Buffett. Maybe he can save oh. us. As a youth minister, I make packs with neither the devil nor island jammers. If we're to get off this boat, it will be by the grace of God. Hmm. Or S Steely Dan. Uh. <laughs> ah, amen. Hey. Our laughter dies slowly. We're both silent for a moment, looking into each other's eyes. Joseph leans in closer. I feel myself doing the same. This is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. I can't help but feel like doing this will end up hurting someone else. But his face is really close to my oh. face. Jimmy... I have to tell you something. Hmm. Oh, are you a sinner, Joseph? Mary and I are done. I pull back and think about the clothes strewn around the lounge. The undone bed. Are you living on this boat? Uh. uh I didn't want to mention it, but... He sighs, strolling back to the controls of the boat. I lean on the console next to him. Hmm. We had a very long talk, and it's unsalvageable. I'm staying here until everything's sorted out. Oh, I'm sorry. If there's anything I can do... Oh. Uh, I'm fine. I I'm fine, actually. <sighs> it was a long time coming. For the first time in a long time, I'm seeing a path of happiness, and now I can focus on myself and stop trying to deny things that make me happy. Hey. I need someone who be there. Someone kind and honest. And you deserve that, Joseph. You really do. Anyways, I've been having this crazy feeling that there's someone who I could get in the habit of having around. Someone very close to here. Is it whales? <laughs> I mean, you... Oh. Huh. I was trying to be subtle. I think I'm picking up with Joseph putting down. I lean forward, closing the gap between us when... Joseph grabs the receiver. Mm. Come in, come in. Is anyone there? Uh, no. Over. <laughs> We're stranded on the open waters. We've been out here for hours. Please send help. Over. But wait, are you guys gonna kiss? <laughs> I'm, I mean, what are your coordinates? Over. Mm. Jimmy.
Have you been leaning on the talk button this whole time? I look down. Oh. Oh, I have definitely been leaning on the talk button. Betrayed by my own butt yet again. Yeah. I didn't lean on it. You leaned on it. Neither of you were leaning on the talk button. We didn't hear anything. Over. Uh -huh. Hey, were, were you listening to us? Sir, we here at the Coast Guard are professionals. We were not doing that. But as professionals, it seems like you deserve happiness, and we think it's closer than you think. Um, over. Uh. How soon can you guys be here to give us a tow? Over. We'll, uh, pick you up in the morning. Sounds like you two have some stuff to hash out. Over and out! Oh, cracker! Wait! Oh. Silence. Nobody returns our radio call. Oh. I think they left. We stare at each other for a second. Yeah. Well... Carefully placing the receiver on the table, making sure the talk button isn't pressed in. Well, okay. Oh. Joseph grabs me by the shirt and pulls me into a kiss. His lips are soft and sweet from the wine, and his skin is still warm from the sun. I reach for his belt and pull him in even closer, running my free hand under his shirt and up his side. Ooh! He pushes me against the boat console, kissing down my neck. Come on. His hands drift to my thighs effortlessly as he picks me up. Wow. Joseph carries me below deck. Oh, yeah, they do. I'd be lying if I said I hadn't fantasized about this, but I didn't think he'd be so aggressive. I've wanted this for so long. He throws me onto the bed. I let out a yell. Oh. Lots of time to kill, Jimmy. We'd better get started. Woohoo! Oh man, I might have overdone the wine last night. Just a few more minutes of sleep will do just fine. Wait. I open my eyes to find Joseph's face a few inches from mine, an arm slung around my waist. He's sleeping peacefully. His hair is mustard and his lips are still a little red. I think this is what, we, what I was talking about when we were discussing Margarita Zone, finding little peaceful moments of joy, like the way the light falls across Joseph's face. Or how he's holding me tight, even in his sleep. I'm very tempted to curl up next to him and keep sleeping. But I know the Coast Guard will probably be here soon. And I'd like to be wearing clothes when that happens. I nudge Joseph. It takes a couple shakes before he barely, blearly opens his eyes. When he notices me hovering over him, he breaks into a huge grin. We should get dressed. Joseph pulls me in for a kiss. Do we have to? Another kiss. Stop trying to tempt me. Fine, fine. Yeah. The Coast Guard eventually shows up and tows us back to the bay. They're thankfully keeping their comments to themselves. Joseph and I step off the yacht and he walks to my car. Oh. I had a great time. Me too. No thanks to the whale. Nice. Shh, shh. You're on land now. They can't hurt you here. Take care, Joseph. <laughs> you too. He gives me one last kiss on the lips before he turns around and walks back to his boat. Well, I've been gone an entire day. Hopefully Amanda is all right. Amanda, I'm... Dad! Mm. She runs up and hugs me. Huh? I was genuinely concerned for your well-being, but upon closer inspection, you seem to be okay. What happened? The yacht ran out of gas, and we got stuck. But it was okay, because I was on a yacht. Mm. Weren't you scared? Your father feels no fear. Were you able to take care of yourself for the night? Yeah, just did a ton of drugs, vandalized a few cars, and then embezzled some funds into my school. All in all, pretty low-key night. Where did you learn that uh. from? from you dad well if you did you would have funneled those funds through legitimate cash and carry business fudging the books and over the years so you could arouse you don't arouse suspicion from the feds working with yeah. panda i'm glad you're back in one piece did you make good choices yeah i think i did but hey i'm starving want to make sandwiches out of whatever we can find in the fridge more than anything pops Really B. I didn't do good? Okay. That's too bad. But I got the margarita zone. Phew. I think I have everything finally set up. Amanda should be here any minute now. Oh, this is the end. This is the end. Oh, oh. Sorry, Jimmy. I have to make this work with... Oh, no. Oh, no. I have to make this work
work with Mary. Oh no. Oh, I knew I should, shouldn't have. I didn't mean to hurt you, and I'm really sorry. And I got caught up in all of this. I just feel so lonely lately. I'm not even sure if I'm doing the right thing here. You've come to mean so much to me, and I'll never forget all these beautiful moments we shared together. Oh no. But I have to thank you. In a way, this whole thing helped me realize that I still love my wife very much. Sinner, cheated on your wife with me. Hmm. I know this is probably what you wanted to hear. I'm sorry if you were hoping something different, but this is where my life is, and I need to do right by my family. But hey, just yeah, again. we'll always have the margarita zone. Hey, I guess so. Take care, Jimmy. You too, Joseph. Well, that sucks. I guess I didn't get the secret ending because that was that was a nice thing. Oh, poopy poo. All right, well, now we're going to have really good conversation with our daughter. Okay. Let's fast forward through this. Oh, I got a picture of Joseph, though. Okay. That's nice. Greeting from the Margarita Zone. Wish you were here. Okay. got friend zone but I got the photo I didn't get the photo with Matt interesting hmm so I wonder what I did wrong in order to get the secret ending hmm I guess I might have to